Hi there, this is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R, and today we're going to be drawing an EO Triceratops. This is E for EO Triceratops for my Dinobet, for my nephew, um, Gunner. And um, I'm going through, I have several um, animal alphabets of different various types out there that I've been working up for nieces and nephews. Um, basically, I'm hoping to um, publish some books uh, when they're all done. Um, I did do um, um, the animal alphabet as a, or animal alphabet as a published book um, some time back, and it's technically not out of print. I still have a few copies left, so it's not out of print as of yet, but um, I need to reprint that one, and I'm thinking about doing, I have a, this dino bet, I have a bug -a bet that I'm working on, the um, uh, ape -a bet, and a beach -a bet. So I have quite a few of these alphabets that I'm doing, and one of the things is, is that um, I'm doing them here for you um, as showing you the pen demonstrations and the watercolor demonstrations primarily because they're very small these pieces are basically um, approximately three inches by three inches and because they are so small they make great little demonstrations when you get the larger the piece the more time you're going to put into a demonstration and you know I say I did a um, one of my uh, premium pieces, um, alligator shoes, the other day. And um, to do the entire drawing took probably about four hours overall. I haven't done the painting yet. I will be doing the painting. And uh, we'll see how long that will take me. I suspect it's going to be another four-hour piece. But I'm not putting the full, full four hours on videotape. Um... It just, nobody wants to sit and watch you do a demonstration for four hours. It's a little bit too much. Um, but uh, these are nice because I can, I can do a full drawing or a full painting in probably anywhere from uh, um, 30 minutes to 40 minutes for each portion of the drawing. Now, I, as you can see here, I put down a rough pencil drawing first. I've, I've already measured out this the information for um, the lines and I've already put down a rough drawing of the EO Triceratops. It used to be an Eoceratops and uh, according to my information around um, 2007 they changed it to the EO Triceratops. It is a Chasmosaurid. Um, Chasmosauridae, or no, Chasmosaurionae, Chasmosaurionae, I'm sorry, um, my Latin, Greek, which is it for the, um, binomial nomenclature, <clears throat> there's a word for you, um, Linnaeus, who, uh, the uh, Swedish scientist who came up with the ideas of, um, categorizing animals, into their various, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, order, suborder, family, subfamily, tribe? We actually have tribe, genus, species. Oh, I didn't know we had tribe. I'm, I'm just looking at Wikipedia right now. Um, honestly, Wikipedia is the, uh, those of you who are old enough know that, that you weren't supposed to use the world book encyclopedia for all your information for your, for your reports because the information was not accurate. I feel that Wikipedia is actually a lot more accurate than scientific, or, um, the um, um, Golden Book Encyclopedia or the um, Britannica Encyclopedia, primarily because um, people are all editing it. There's um, information can be changed on it. Information can be updated on it. You have to footnote particular information. So if you're doing something like dinosaurs and you want um, pretty recent information, they're actually not bad about getting this information on. So it's like, um, I did a coloring book. Um, you can still get it online through Dover Publications. 
Uh, it's a dinosaur ABC. I've got a thing about ABCs, you can tell. Um, I, I really enjoy our 26 letter alphabet that has, that can categorize everything into um, so many, um, you know, I get 26 images every time I want to do something. So it's, it's rather fun if you have, you know, you want to categorize something. The next thing I might do too, um, I was thinking the other day um, for digital, and I'll figure out how to do these as digital vid videos as well. I know I can do the MP4s and throw them into an editing software and add music in the background. Um, but I'm thinking about uh, doing um, kind of cartoon images of the 50 birds of the United States, and I'm thinking about possibly doing um, hockey teams and um, sports teams doing I'm doing some caricatures, doing some cartoon, more cartoon stuff digitally rather than the traditional like I am doing here. Now you'll notice I'm using Bic Stick. This is your standard Bic ballpoint pen. Um, I like it as a underpainting for or an underdrawing for um, watercolor because it is an oil-based um, petroleum product yeah, that um, it works uh, as a resistance so that if you paint over the top of it, the black will come through a lot darker than if you were to use pencil. Um, and uh, I kind of like that. Now you notice what I'm doing here with, with this particular dinosaur is I've taken the image of the E and kind of used it as a cutout like we're looking through a window to see the dinosaur. This guy would not fit very well into um, a uh, an E, but the head looks kind of nice this way. So that's why uh, I decided to do it this way for my E. And you can see we're, we're doing the outlining of the head. Now I'm going to put some uh, um, cycads in the background here. Um, there were most of the plants during this period of the time were um, the cycads are a funny type of barrel shaped plant that have um, uh, kind of brush like fronds that come out the top of them they'll be dark green so I'll probably make um, our triceratops here a yellow and then I'll paint in the um, the cycads probably blue and green when I get to them. But I'm kind of just laying in foliage that will go behind him to fill up that E. So it'll read as an E and as a dinosaur at the same time. And I will also um, be using this for a coloring book as well. Um, this particular dinosaur was found in Alberta, Canada. They found pieces of it and they were reconstructed a skull. Um, like I said, that he uh, comes from uh, the uh, Chasmosaurinae. Chasmosaurin Excuse me if I pronounced that wrong. You can look it up. It's on, like I said, Wikipedia is a great source of uh, all information for I use it for when I'm um, looking up animals um, for the latest information on like um, where things are standing in the endangered species um, situation as of I think it was a couple years ago we lost the black rhino totally in nature you can still find them in zoos but uh, currently the black rhino is extinct in the wild which uh, Kind of sad. I knew it was going to happen in my lifetime, but um, we do have extinctions going on. Um, <laughs> speaking of extinctions, in my backyard, I mean, if you don't believe in climate change, my oak trees in my backyard, I've got, I've lost like about 10 of them in the past five years to droughts. Okay, so we're putting in these, um, these cycads. In the background just these leaves and what like I said when I go in I will I will paint those in green I'm gonna go over the uh, horns here one more time I'm also going to go over those um, 
again when I'm I'm done painting because I've often said this but um, if you're drawing a point pen and you're painting in watercolor there still will be pigment left behind so you want to be able to uh, go over one more time to crisp up your lines and get the black a little bit more intense and what I'm going to do here too, you can still see some pencil drawing underneath. I will let this this drawing dry for about an hour before I erase all my pencil lines away. Um, ballpoint pen is gloppy, so occasionally what you want to do is take a paper towel, and so you can see that, and just you know rub the ballpoint pen on a paper towel, or you can take um, like a post-it note like this one, and it's like my my blobs of but um, take the the and so you can rub it to the side there, and that'll also take the buildup of the ink that uh, gets there. Because you can see, like right here in the corner, there's been a little bit of a smear where the ink will sometimes get a little bit too thick. And what I'll do is I'll let it dry for about an hour, um, and then I'll go back in with an X-Acto knife and uh, clean up those lines. I will go in and I will scrape the um, ink off the paper. So the thing is, you know, it's kind of like if you ever have uh, had a, put a uh, ballpoint pen in your pocket and had it bleed. Oh, hang on here. Going off camera again, sorry. Um, uh, it is not totally permanent. You, you can... Uh, it's really tough to get it out of cloth. And the thing is, is that this is technically, your paper is cotton cloth. So for the most part, ballpoint pen's pretty dang permanent for a painting. Um, I'm not sure the fugitive capabilities of ballpoint pen, um, like over the centuries, but I suspect um, you can count on it lasting at least a couple of hundred years without fading and, and as long as somebody doesn't put your piece in the sunlight which you know nobody who's got good artwork is going to put the artwork in direct sunlight you don't have to worry too much about your regular big stick fading out unless it's like indirect sunlight for a hundred years and that's not going to happen it's like I don't even know whether people will be hanging paintings on the walls in a hundred years from now. Also, if you're using this as an illustration or using this as um, to go finally to di digital art, because that's what's going to happen with this. This will be scanned into a computer. Um, the originals I'll send to the, the, my kids and the, or my uh, my nieces and nephews to see if they want to use it. You know, to um, to uh, give to their progeny when uh, they get older. Give this guy a little bit of texture. Because most of the other drawings, I'm not getting real close in on my dinosaurs. And the thing is, when I come in to paint him, I probably give him like some spots or something, some interesting textures. Because we don't really know what type of markings dinosaur ha had because all we've got is the bone. Okay. So that's basically... Um, our EO Triceratops and come back in about a week and I will have um, the video of the painting of it as well. What I'm going to start out too with when we start out, I will start out by erasing this out and see where I've overdrawn the line here. I'll go through um, the technique I use for um, getting rid of that. For now, if you, you um, don't come back, you take um, an exacto knife blade and you scrape it across the top then you come in with a kneaded eraser and a latex eraser um, after the fact to smooth it down and nobody will ever know that you made a mistake but that's about it for now that's the EO Triceratops thank you for stopping and by I really appreciate your viewing hit the subscribe and like um, I'm trying to post these once a week if you're interested thank you very much appreciate it bye bye